How's it going everyone? Tales of, from the Flipside family. What's going on? It's Emmett from Haven for Heroes. I'm here on the banks of the Achigachi River. I'm about uh, 20 minutes from the Canadian border on a little R&R &R and a little, uh, you know, sourcing. Uh, trying to get some Canadian price variants up here in the uh, north of New York. Uh, so what, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about sourcing. And uh, since I'm on vacation, we're going to have a little liability, a little bit of mother's milk. So everybody knows you got a comic shop, you know, you have a brick and mortar. People come in all the time to sell you stuff, especially with the economy starting to head a little south. We've had people coming in every day. But there's a lot of other sources that I use when times are slow, when times are good. And people are loving their collections and nothing's coming through the door you still got to get them you still got to find them so one of my very first things i started doing because i used to do this back in the day i used to actually do storage buildings way back in the 80s late 80s uh through the 90s i used to do the flea markets so i used to buy storage units all the time uh, and they were great back then you could get them for 50 bucks 25 bucks filled no problem Nobody wanted them. As far as everybody was concerned, it was garbage. Now, since the television show, the secret's out, they cost a little bit too much money. But what I do is I go to the auctions and I'll meet up with the other buyers and I'll hand them a list of the stuff that I buy and I tell them, hey, if you have a tough time moving any stuff online or you want to refresh your inventory or you're getting too much, give me a call. I'll come out or you can bring it down. Cash on the barrelhead, man. When you show up, here's your money. Uh, and I do, you know, I tell everybody right off the bat, I'm with the same with everybody on your money goods, on the stuff that's got some value, can sell, I pay 40%. That's right, only 40%. Um, and uh, on the bulk, depends on what it is. Bulk toys is a lot less than bulk comics. Bulk comics I pay anywhere between uh, 15 cents and 30 cents uh, a book. 15 cents if it's un. Uh, boarded and bagged, uh, 30 cents if it's bagged and boarded, uh, and that's if they're in good shape in the bag and the board, right? If they're modern comics that were put in there when they were first read and not beat up books just shoved in bags, you know? So that's uh, my number one, one of my number one sources is these guys every time they get too much or they'll wait till they have a bunch of like they get a few in this unit and a few in that unit and they put it all together and they'll bring it in or they'll have me come out to their warehouse next thing is I start contacting uh, real estate agents to get the numbers of people that clean out houses somebody dies um, and the family just wants to sell the house they don't want anything in it or they take the stuff they want out of it and they need the rest of it cleaned out there's these guys that go around clean out these houses so, so I called a few of these guys and I said hey if you're putting all this stuff in a, in a you know a 75 foot dumpster um, out in front of the house give me a call I'll come by wherever you're packing up I'll pick out the stuff that I want just I'll go through your dumpster even you can put it in there and I'll pull it out and I'll give you cash and uh, man some serious home runs especially in the video game market um, and I'm pretty sure now in the VHS market I'm gonna start hitting that I sadly years ago have passed on a lot of VHS that I probably should have bought but uh, they're a gr another great resource now if you're lucky enough to have a electronics um, reclaim center is where they um, they take electronics in and then they uh, recycle them a lot of those places will actually because some of it is they don't want to throw they can't throw away like the plastic stuff and everything so if you go in they'll sell you stuff out, out of there and I had one right in Port Jervis for, for a while and I used to go to it monthly and I'm telling you the video game stuff I was getting from these guys was incredible 30 gallon totes 10 10 to 30 dollars um, systems games accessories um, everything everything and you know I'm a bit of a collector myself so there's a lot of other stuff in there I could get uh, that I ended up having you know uh, not having to sell but selling uh, down the road 
because um, I get a better one or a different one that I like. One sec. So look around for those, all right? Um, I know the one in my town closed, but they were in Newark, New Jersey. So I had made a trip down to Newark. It wasn't as good as the one in Port. Uh, the sales guys there, I think people were, were onto it down there and it wasn't much left. Um, there's one out in Scranton, PA that I have to hit. I know there's a bunch of them. So you're looking for elect, uh, electronic recycling places and uh, they can be a home run if you're doing any kind of uh, video game uh, reselling. Uh, just a lot of, lot of great stuff systems and a lot of times you know this the game is in the system get the system I, I must have 40 or 50 uh, game cubes because when the Wii came out everybody got rid of their game cubes but didn't get rid of the games uh, so they had tons of game cubes but a lot of times there was still a game left in there and there's a, you know how much some of those GameCube games can go for so another great place to, to source is uh, is there at the electronic recycle now everybody knows yard sales and flea markets, great place to go out. If you have a weekend off, you can go out there. But uh, the number one thing when you go out to um, flea markets is a lot of these guys, this is their, their side hustle. Their side hustle is this. And you wanna make, you wanna talk them up. You wanna get to know them. You wanna get to let them know what you're looking for. Cause look, they're looking for an easy sale. They're looking for an e easy turnover. And if you're gonna pay them a fair price, they're going to hold it for you. You know, if you come every week and you get to know these guys and they're always, it's just, it's like if you had the time to go out and source way more stuff, if you had the time and the gas money to go everywhere, these guys are all over the place. And uh, you make friends with them and let them know and you pay them a fair price. They're going to hold stuff for you and it, you're going to make a lot of money on it. Like, like I said, paying 40%, you got a 60% more margin. If that item goes up, your margins just go up. And the way the comic market has been, it's been crazy, right? Um, you know, we're getting a little downturn now, but on the upside, you're all over it, right? So before COVID, uh, you buy a book for one or $200. By the end of COVID, it's a grand, you know? Home run, home run. I know two years ago I was selling uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, the first appearance of Miles, for 90 bucks, and uh, now I won't sell mine for a grand. So I got mine at a at thousand dollars, and when they're selling for six and eight hundred, because uh, it's ungraded, it's raw, and it's still in the bag. I know that's you know a lot of people say it's wrong, but uh, that's one of the books that you just can't go wrong owning that book. Um, it's probably the most popular modern character uh, in comic books. Uh, now, the, another place is if you can find out the guy who does the cleanouts for those uh, clothes dumps. Um, you'll see them. They have like uh, support your local fire company or fire victims, or they actually have a guy that goes around and cleans them out. All right. And now they only take clothing. Uh, but a lot of people dump all kinds of stuff in there. I've gotten video games and um, magazines and when I used to do DVDs, DVDs and uh, I do, did do a lot of open DHS and those guys used to, and like I 10 cents a piece on some of this stuff. But this guy was getting paid to clean it out. They didn't want it. He didn't want it. He wanted to make cash on it and I'm there for them. So there's another place like you got to, be talking to people you got to be uh, out there trying to get information on who's sourcing what don't let stuff end up in the dump and if you could make a buck on it that guy can make a buck on it everybody's doing good find out who's uh, dumping this stuff let them know you'll pay them for it and it's gonna be a boon for you a boon for your business if you just got a little side hustle going on even, this is a great, these are great guys that, to be in contact with. They'll keep you stocked up, especially in the slow times when you're not getting stuff. 
when people aren't moving on their stuff. Bad weekends when there's a couple weekends in a row when there's when it's raining, there's no yard sailing, right? You gotta pick these guys up. And let me tell you, uh, from a guy that used to do storage units, uh, you end up with a lot of junk. Uh, stuff that will take you a long time to sell, uh, a lot of work in cleaning up, uh, a lot of stuff you don't wanna sell, you don't have any expertise in, furniture and all this other stuff. It's much better to buy it from the guys who that is their business and they don't want to do the collectible stuff. I do have a couple of guys. Uh, the deal is I'll give them a couple of books that'll eBay, right, out of the collection they get if they bring me comics. I'll give them a couple of big books that they can make full, full bang on and they'll sell me the rest. When they meet a certain amount, they're happy and then I can get the rest of the books at, at my price. And usually when I've picked out books for them, they give me the rest of them at 15 cents a piece. So there's still, you know, a couple of really good books in there. What you wanna do is, like, it, like all businesses, is build relationships. Get, let the guys know what you're looking for. Be really upfront and honest with what you're gonna pay. Um, I always show guys the books, the big books. Like when I go through people's collections, or even dealers collections I go well here's the money this is what I'm gonna pay you 40% on and all the rest is you know bulk now sometimes you know they'll want to go back through it and you know sometimes they'll be like oh what about this book it's a spider-man book I'm mean, yeah but it's like a spider-man book not amazing spider-man you know and there's a lot of that 90s stuff uh, spider-man that aren't worth much or nothing at all and are overprinted so be fair, be knowledgeable. That's a big part. I use a lot of different apps and we're gonna go through that later on and how I do my pricing and all that. Uh, sorry about the shadow, but I'm in this beautiful sun in upstate New York and enjoying myself, a little libation. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate everybody tuning in. I hope you enjoyed uh, our three part episode uh, with Cyberspace Comics. Um, I got another comic shop probably coming up in a couple of weeks. I got to contact him. He contacted me, kind of left him out in the wind, but uh, I'm going to be talking to him. Uh, I'm really interested. He looks like a really fun guy, really knowledgeable guy. I've seen him on some other shows, so uh, we're going to be having him on. I don't want to say who it is yet because I uh, want to get him to commit first, but uh, yeah, we're going to do uh, that. I really... Uh, going to contact somebody in the upstate New York uh, area because uh, I really like what she's doing and uh, want to show you a couple of different comic shops um, especially one that I've, I've kind of like talked about comic shops that are just doing new books and I'm like ah you really can't make a living on new books well I found somebody on the internet who's doing great with just new books and I'm going to want to bring that person on Hopefully they'll agree to come onto the show uh, and talk about their business model and how they're making it uh, because it really impressed me. I was I was blown away because I I really don't make any money on new books. Uh, I warehouse a bunch, <laughs> right? I sell new books, but uh, a lot of them go on the shelf afterwards. So, um, and I'll talk about in future episodes. I'm going to talk about uh, what I do with those books and uh, how long I keep those before. You know, you got to wholesale them out at some point and uh, what I wholesale them for. So again, please leave us comments about what you're interested in hearing about in, a, in owning a comic shop. Like I said, I'm not the most successful comic shop in the world, but I'm not going to pull any punches and I'm not going to hold anything back. Uh, bruises, scars, all the rest, uh, you're gonna, we'll talk about it and we'll show it to you. Uh, Next time, I promise, a little shot of the basement, and you'll uh, be a little freaked out. So, uh, yeah, thanks for coming along on this journey. Peace out.